The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. You, know, you, you said a little while ago in your diatribe, you said, if we only knew then, talking about before Obama went in office, what we know now. Well, if, well, of course. But here's the deal, Mike. Many of us did know. You and I knew. We were saying on the radio continually, folks, please don't put this guy in the White House. He is more liberal. His voting record is more liberal than Teddy Kennedy. His right. book, Dreams of My Father, he tells us who he is. He tells us where his loyalties lie. We know that he's infatuated with Islam. We know that he's infatuated with the Muslim Brotherhood. He told us that. We know that he hates America and American ideals and the founding uh, formations and platforms and planks of America. He told us that. We knew he was thinking liberal. And on top of that, we knew or we suspected that he might not even be constitutionally eligible to serve. We begged America. We knew. He told us that he was going to fundamentally change America. We knew then what we now know. We knew it. We knew it. But so many Americans said, well, I, let me just say what Joe Biden said. Finally, we have a clean black man running for office. Wow. wow. Joe Biden. See, he makes a racist comment and he's promoted the vice president. Finally, we people. finally we yeah. have a clean, intelligent sounding black man yeah. running for office. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. The Bergdahl situation. Uh, I mean, that's that's huge. That's in the he headlines of the news. And and, you know, how many times have we heard this might be Obama's downfall? Well, I mean, you know, there are a lot of people saying that, and it should be, but of course, so should so many other things that came before, Fast and Furious, the IRS scandals, uh, the NSA scandals, the uh, Benghazi scandal, the, the whole birth certificate identity crisis scandal. I, I mean, I could go right on down the list. Uh, any of those should have been investigated. Almost all of them could have, should have been his uh, political downfall. So we'll see what happens with this, but if you want to sound off on that situation, again, you can't. Well, let's go to the phone lines because Bob has been listening to Freedom Friday this afternoon. Bob, thank you for listening. And you have a question about the Zulu Arpaio investigation or either a comment. So go ahead, Bob. Well, just a question. How, how would you respond to someone who says Mike Zulu needs to paint or get off the ladder? Yeah, very, very easily. I would say to that person, uh, what would you want him to do? To bring something forward when it is not ready and not, uh, and, and then have it to fall apart with, and it's our last, uh, chance? Uh, our best chance, uh, or would you rather it be ready to go and ready to be dealt with by media and or Congress and or courts and uh, so that something could be done correctly? That's what I would ask. And But the bottom line is, uh, if it were not for Mike Zulo, if it were not for Sheriff Arpaio, Bob, uh, you and I would know nothing about these criminal things that are getting ready to come forward, and nothing would be being done. But these guys are doing it. And what they're going to bring is going to be powerful. And as you've probably heard Mike say right here, um, it's going to be worth the wait. So bottom line is they are our last hope in this and until it's out. And once it's out, I really believe there's going to be an overwhelming response to it. But they are our last hope. So we're going to have to be patient. and We're going to have to support them. That's what I would say. But do, do you know who it is that said that uh, he needs to paint or get off the ladder? Oh, I've, I've heard that many times. I, I don't know. Who was it? It was the radio station owner, Mike Bates. Oh, well, <laughs> so Mike Bates said that? Well, that yeah. Did. yeah. Well, and I would say to Mike Bates to his face or anybody else right here over this radio program what I just said. You know, what, what, what do you expect him to do, Mike? What do you expect him to do, Jim, John, uh, Mary, uh, Peggy? What, what do you expect him to do? You want him to bring something to, uh, to the table? You want him to bring something forward uh, before it's ready but so that it'll just be shot down and tore up? Or do you want it to be solid? Do you want it to be gold? Do you want it to be ready to go? Wh which one do you want? So, you know, and besides, I would say to anyone else who says that, I'd say, well, you know what? Let's see what, why don't you bring to the table what you've done? Oh, you haven't done anything? Okay, then let's wait on Zulo. Okay, well, you know, I had to ask this question. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Bob. Hey, and thank All you right. so much for listening, and thank you for your input. God bless you, man. Thanks. All right, let's go right back to the phone lines. Ken, thank you so much for listening to Freedom Friday today. Thanks for hanging on. Folks, if you want to be a part of the show, you can ask anything you want about anything. We can talk about anything. We just kind of have an open line here for the next few minutes. It's 623-1330, area code 850, Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. Ken, you want to talk about the Zulo Arpaio investigation. Go ahead, Ken. Yeah, I just want to make a, a comment. You know, this has been going on for years and years now about the uh, 
Sheriff uh, Joe's uh, papers. And, and all we keep hearing that it's going to come out, it's going to come out. Uh, what I don't understand is uh, why is it taking so long? Uh, yeah. Everybody keeps saying that it's soon, soon, soon. I've been listening to your show here for years about this, and it's always soon, 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 but nothing ever happens. Yeah. And in my opinion, the only time it's going to happen and come out is after the uh, 2016 elections. Yeah. And then it may come out. Yeah. Well, listen, that is a fair question, Ken, and a lot of people are asking it, and we have addressed it over and over here on the radio program, but thank you for listening, and stay on the line just in case you have something you want to say or disagree or agree no, with me I, when I, I'm finished. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'll, okay. I'll let you go ahead and, and talk, and I'll let somebody else, but that's just my okay. comment. I've been okay. doing this for years, and nothing happened. Okay. So. Well, thanks. Okay, thank I, you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Well, let me respond to what Ken said, because that is a fair question. Uh, the bottom line, let me just remind people, this has not been going on for years and years and years. Uh, now, the whole question of who he is has been going on since before he was elected the first time. And people have been speaking to it. I've been one uh, who has spoken to it. But it wasn't until just two years ago when Sheriff Arpaio was petitioned by 250 of his own citizens uh, to do something about the, the fraud that may have taken place in Maricopa County by having this man on the ballot, who by then the birth certificate was posted on the web, website that so many people were looking at and saying, this thing is fraudulent, it's a fabrication, it's a fake. And so Arpaio established the investigation through the cold case posse. Mike Zulo was established as the commander of that unit, answers only to Arpaio. Now that investigation has only been going for two years. However, uh, if you'll remember, folks, that, it, it, that about a year ago or more, a year and a half ago, they gave a press conference and they presented information that should have gone directly to Congress then. There should have been a full congressional investigation because they gave overwhelming, indisputable proof that the birth certificate was a complete fabrication and fraud. So Arpaio didn't drop the ball. Zulo didn't drop the ball. Congress dropped the ball. The courts dropped the ball. So, so you know, you can't say, well, you know, we've been waiting for years and nothing ever happens. Well, that's not true. Something big did happen. And even the media dropped the ball. The media, now we know, were told to shut up. They were threatened. We've got affidavits from media people who were threatened by Obama operatives. Uh, it, and Mike Zulo has spoken of that many times. So something has happened. Big stuff has happened. But in the meantime... In the last six or eight months, more stuff has happened. And, and uh, well, it's been another, about the last year. And Mike Zulo has been on this show many times giving updates, 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 keeping people informed. And they were shooting for a March uh, release date, the last of March. But even Arpaio, just a few weeks ago on Fox News, told us why that has been pushed up. The reason it was pushed up is because now they're on to who did it. Now they've got the information. They know who did it. So they're putting all of this together to bring forward with everything else they have. And Mike Zulo has said that what else, the other stuff they have is universe shattering information. So I'm going to take the, I'm going to make a synopsis of the first caller's question and the second caller's question, you know. So what do we say about this? What we say is praise God for Sheriff Arpaio, Arpaio and Mike Zulo and hang on and be patient because it's coming. You heard Zulo say it is coming sooner rather than later. Listen, more calls on the on, on the phones, and we've got to take a time out. We're up against a break here. Robert, uh, thank you for listening to Freedom Friday. You have a question or a comment about the Zulo Arpaio investigation. Shoot. Yes, I do. Um, the Phoenix New Times is reporting that the universe first shattering information is that Arpaio and Zulu yeah. are investigating a federal judge and Eric Holder. Is that true? Yeah. Well, you know what? Thank you for asking that. To the best of my knowledge, it's not true. Now, I can be proven wrong later if Arpaio comes out and, and says that that's a part of his investigation. But uh, the stuff that I know, um, that's not part of it. But I'm really not at liberty at this point to say exactly what is or is not a part of that investigation. But let me say this about the Phoenix New Times. Uh, in my opinion, they are a gossip rag. They are found for free at bus stations all over <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. I mean, I've got a lot of contacts inside of Phoenix, Arizona, beyond Mike Zulo. A lot of people that I know from that area, and I speak with them, and I ask them about this rag, and every one of them says, Carl, nobody pays attention to this. This thing is, is pro-homosexual. It's anti-American. They give it away. People, you know, you can't hardly even give the thing away. Most of the reporting that I've ever seen that they've done has been absolutely um, way off base and totally totally wrong. So I would guess, if I had to bet money on it, I would 
bet that what they are reporting is not true. But I can tell you, Robert, that what is going to be announced, uh, Zulo has described as universe shattering. And so what the, uh, what the uh, uh, Phoenix New Times has reported is, you know, pretty, pretty profound if that's a part of it, but that's not the universe shattering information. Does that help you? Well, it does, except that um, in the article, uh, Zulu didn't deny anything. He just said no comment. And well, I, was like, it, 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 I can tell so you wrong. why. Why did he just why did he say that? Why did no, he just say, no, can, you're wrong? Yeah, I can tell you why. Because Mike Zulu knows um, the reporting credibility of these people. Look, I would do the same thing. If I was a professional investigator it, answering only to Sheriff Arpaio, and this rag called me with that kind of stuff, I would say, I have no comment for you. I have no comment. In fact, you know, I'm a senior pastor, been, been a pastor 28 years on the Gulf Coast, and so I've been involved in a lot of politics and various issues and various things along in those almost 30 years. I've had newspapers call me about things, and I know how they were going to slant it, or I'd already read an article where they had already gone off on it, and then they call me, well, what do you say about this, pastor? And my comment is, I don't have any comments for you. And so, you know, it's not that I'm not saying that what they're saying is correct, and peop- it's just that I, d- I don't want to talk to them about it. That I don't consider them to be valid. And I would imagine that's probably what was going on in Zulo's mind. Are you, you have anything else, Robert? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, I, listen, I appreciate you uh, making that phone call, Robert, and asking that question uh, because um, somebody did send me that link, and I looked at it, and I just kind of laughed. And I said, well, you know, this, there may be something to this, but uh, I don't know anything about it, and uh, I don't trust anything that the Phoenix New Times says because in, in my name appears in that uh, rag quite often, and, and they have misquoted me and, and, and put misinformation in there about me. So... I, they're they're irrelevant. They are irrelevant. You know, when you give, when you have to give it away at bus stops in a city the size of Phoenix, um, I <laughs> I don't give it much credence. Well, anyway, I know they're listening to this, and of course they're going to probably print everything I'm saying now, and that's wonderful. That just uh, gets more listeners to my program, and I appreciate it. Again, we've got a, we've got a moment to take another call. If you'd like to call six two three thirteen thirty, area code eight five zero. Phones are ringing, and perhaps we can uh, get your phone call in uh, before we have to uh, get off the air here for our last break, last time out. And then we're going to bring on Brandon Big B. Let me remind our listeners that are right here in the Pensacola area, a long way off that movie by Uptone Pictures, starring Jason Berkey, Edie McClure, John Davies, John Deal. It's coming up at the Carmike Ten on Nine Mile Road. Starts at. 7.20 tonight. That's the premiere showing. It'll be there for about a week. It's a Christian movie, a faith-based film, and uh, it is going to be there for a week. Uptone Pictures, the uh, presenters of it, a long way off. Check it out if you live right here in the local area. Let's go right back to the phone lines. And Jeremy, thanks for listening. And it looks like everybody wants to talk about Zulo. Go ahead and shoot. Make it quick, Jeremy. We're almost out of time. Uh, just quickly, um, I know Mike Zulu was kind of uh, very... Um specific about uh, Mr. Apio not you, wanting to... You're going to have to ask you a question, Jeremy. We're almost out of time. Ask you a question. It, um, I, I'm just kind of hoping that they're going... It's not a question, more of a comment. I'm hoping that they are watching the event and trying to get this out as soon as possible. Yeah. Jeremy, listen, a lot of people are hoping that, and they are. They are, but they, they don't have political motives. They're not trying to time it with any certain political event, but they know the seriousness of this. Believe me, if anybody knows Jeremy, they know. And you heard Mike Zulo say right here, if anybody wants this out, he does. And so it's going to come out. It's going to come out. Be patient. If it wasn't for Arpaio and Zulo, you would know nothing. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.